building and construction of this station, we owe largely to the sacrificial gifts of the students, faculty, and staff of the Northwestern schools. And today we are grateful for these over a thousand students that have come from... That was Reverend Billy Graham's opening blessing on the first broadcast from KTIS. It's amazing to hear that recording, knowing he played such a pivotal role at Northwestern. I'm Ashley Chapetta. And I'm Brennan Scarborough. Welcome to Eagle 7 News. Mm -hmm. And today, we remember the life of Reverend Billy Graham and the amazing legacy that he left behind. Billy Graham, arguably the 20th century's most influential religious figure, passed away this past Wednesday morning, February 21st, at the age of 99 in his home state of North Carolina. During Graham's life, he preached the gospel to more than 2.2 billion people throughout his career. In addition to traveling to 185 countries, Graham utilized broadcast, radio, and TV. He was a trusted spiritual advisor to every president from Truman to Obama. Graham was truly America's pastor and he will be missed, but his memory and legacy are strong and unforgettable. Many know that Billy Graham preached to millions throughout the ministry and the Crusades, but few realize the impact that he had here right at Northwestern. We celebrate his homegoing and we're grateful for uh, the fact that he was a part of our rich legacy here at Northwestern. Early Wednesday morning, the announcement was released that Reverend Billy Graham had passed away the greatest evangelical leader of our time. Even though Reverend Graham was mostly known for his years of evangelism. With the Crusades and everything, and they all kind of came together, and that's when he really became America's pastor. It was his four years as UNW's second president that means the most to us. Billy Graham is a part of our history. Located at the center of campus, the Billy Graham Commons stands as a reminder for the imprint that he's left. The idea of honoring Dr. Graham, it kind of all came together and so they started raising money and then in 2011, that's when they had the prayer of dedication or the, uh, the ribbon cutting and this building was, uh, was launched. But his major accomplishment at UNW is another popular building on campus. He launched KTIS back in 1949. And even though this building isn't the one that's named after him, it's the KTIS building that really embodied his mission here at UNW and ultimately spread throughout the whole Midwest. KTIS, hi. It's really an intentional plan for Northwestern Media since the beginning to reach our communities for Christ. And after seeing his project come to fruition, Billy Graham was able to play a large role in the station's first broadcast. So Dr. Graham was the first person that was on the air on KTIS, and he started it, of course, with a prayer. It's so cool to think that he's the one that signed us on the air since he's the one that launched the station. Think of the millions of people who have been touched and changed by the Reverend Dr. Billy Graham. But it was his time after Northwestern, where Billy Graham's ministry was at its peak, reaching people all over the nation. God gave him a gift, you know, to love people. Even after his passing, the memories of the Reverend remain positive for believers and non-believers alike. People loved him, even if they weren't in the faith. They weren't intimidated by that, and he spoke the truth. For Eagle 7 News, KTIS and Northwestern Media would not be on the air today spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ if it weren't for Dr. Billy Graham and his legacy at Northwestern. I'm Brennan Scarborough. People from around the world are sharing their memories and stories about how Dr. Reverend Graham made an impact on their lives, from world leaders to folks right here on campus. The University of Northwestern is mourning the loss of Reverend Billy Graham. I'm here in the Billy Graham Community Life Commons to get the community's reaction. I actually had a text from my mom this morning. Um, my mom is in her mid-60s, so definitely a significant impact for her and her lifetime. So that was significant, and it made walking into the Billy Graham Community Life Commons so much more weighty this morning. He definitely left a big impact on Northwestern, so it wasn't wasn't great news to receive, definitely. What a rich life, um, but what a huge loss. I have people in my family who came to Christ because of Billy Graham, and so to know that he had such an impact on their lives is really significant to me personally, so sad to see him go. It's bittersweet, obviously sad because he's such an amazing person who passed away, but really sweet too because he's been preaching his whole life. These individuals also shared how they think Billy Graham should be remembered. I hope that he's remembered as a person who uh, really understood the world's need for the gospel. Things that he did are definitely things that um, we at Northwestern want to achieve. I remember reading a quote of his several years ago about, hey, someday you're going to read that Billy Graham died. Don't believe it because he's more alive than he's ever been here on earth. He created space um, for presidents to come in, for the the darkest of sinners, if you would, um, to come in and, and everyone in between. And so that legacy hopefully will continue to impact our campus as well. 
President Curitan released a statement yesterday to all students, staff, and faculty. The statement said in part, The Lord used him and this ministry to reach millions of people with the good news of Jesus Christ. His influence and footprint covered the globe. He was a man of humility, character, and integrity. He was, as CNN posted today, America's pastor. His legacy will definitely be remembered, and especially here on campus, right, Ashley? Mm -hmm. Especially here on campus. Mm -hmm. It was a little bit colder last week, but temperatures should be climbing. Caleb, what can we expect? Well, Brendan, I hate to say it, but last year at this time, we were in the high 50s and low 60s. We'll be more in the 30s this week with a high of 31 and partly cloudy today. Saturday is going to actually bring some snow with a high of 35, and then also Sunday with a high of 30, Monday with a high of 36, and high of 39 on Tuesday. Partly cloudy, but you never know with Minnesota's unpredictability, maybe those 50s and 60s are coming right around the corner. Back to you guys. Spring sports are gearing, he, gearing up here at Northwestern, but for one club team, it's hard to find space to practice this winter. The ultimate Frisbee team has had to get creative. It's been a snowy cold February, leaving the athletic fields unavailable and Erickson occupied with varsity sports. We caught up with the captains of the UNW club ultimate team to see how they're finding practice time despite these conditions. Squeezing in practice time when there's still snow on the ground can be difficult. But we have a church that we rent out for the gym once a week so we can get our throwing down and our plays. With Ultimate there's a lot of running so just getting everybody used to that running for the season uh, is, is what we're kind of striving for. Like the other night we had to practice in the stud gym so that's just something about being a little more flexible real, realizing that you know, we don't have first priority. It's not always easy managing a club team, especially as a student, but their hard work has paid off. One of the most rewarding parts of being part of this club is just being a part of a team and continually striving toward more and more success. Friendships have been made and people have been just um, loving the game and enjoying each other. One, two, three, Eagles! For Eagle 7 News, I'm Tori Hain. So, Brennan, I know you're going to NRB conference this weekend. Can you tell us a little bit about what that's going to be like? Yeah, so last year we went to something called NRB, and that's the National Religious Broadcasters Convention. Okay. Really cool experience. It was held mm -hmm. in Florida last year. And this year it's actually going to be held in Tennessee. Okay. Really excited to go. I've never been to Tennessee. But, yeah, we'll be competing in something called the 24-hour uh, news competition. And there's three categories. There is film, there is radio, and there's television. And um, just really fun experience. I was so glad that I got to go last year okay. and this year. What team are you competing on? So we mm -hmm. will be competing with Eagle 7 for the TV News 24-hour okay. competition. So, awesome. Good yeah. luck for that. That'll Thank be great. Yeah, yeah, this is actually something we brought back last year. So hopefully we can bring another one back. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's all we have for Eagle 7 today, but make sure that you guys catch the basketball game tomorrow night. They will be playing for the UMAC Championship um, in Mankato at 7.30 p.m. And the live stream will be on UNWEagles.com. Make sure to catch it there. I'm Brennan Scarborough. I'm Ashley Chapetta, And I'm Tori Hain. Stay fly, Eagles. <laughs>